hello yeah hello everyone thanks for having me here uh, so my da uh, open daylight project title is release dashboard for open daylight project and it's So coming to myself, I'm SVK Rohit, I'm an undergraduate fourth year, I'm from IIIT Hyderabad, India and my interests are in cloud computing and web development and my mentor was George. So the project, so what's the goal of the project? Simply put, a dashboard that gives a birth's view of all open daylight projects, uh, project stresses. So there are many pr projects in open daylight and so this dashboard intends to pinpoint those projects which have like which are lagging behind in and specify what specific areas they are lagging behind. For example, uh, a project might not have commits since past few months or a project might have many pending critical bugs to be solved. So this dashboard intends to point out those. Now how do, how do I point out those as in how do I calculate those? That is through benchmark analysis of each project. Now what is benchmark analysis is? It intends to give a score to each project based on some benchmark or some criteria. So to evaluate a project, uh, I need data and to set the criteria also I need data and I need data from two sources that is from the pro uh, the tools that open daylight project uses such as Sonar, Bugzilla, Git and the results of various performance tests and robot results. So I need a framework where I could mine this data and then store it in a database and then query the database and then analyze it so that I can calculate the score or do a benchmark analysis. So I have used, coming to technical details, I have used Django and D3 for visualization. The Postgres have used, uh, the database have used is Postgres and the tools that I have mined from are Git, Bugzilla and Sonar. So uh, I have written Python scripts that actually use the APIs provided by GitHub, uh, Sonar or Bugzilla. Uh, they, po they, co they poll it like every five minutes and then it, they update, it in, update the data in the database. What is the data? I will show it in the demo. Uh, so for the Jenkins performance results, I had to write a Jenkins post build script which automatically uh, stores the results into the database as soon as the build finishes. Uh, a robot listener library for storing ro robot results. So it's a listener library, so as soon as a robot test ends, it automatically calls the function and then the function stores the results into the database. So the other part that I have integrated into my dashboard is the OpenStack and Open Daylight Tempest results that were given by Pramod Arjay, the guy from Intel. So by this one can understand that this dashboard uh, makes it easy to navigate through all types of results that Open Daylight pro I mean, provides or gives. So the demo. Yeah, so here you can see uh, these are the bugs, uh, the blocker, the confirm bugs, the critical bugs, the number, the count uh, that I have pulled from the Bugzilla API. And these are, this is from the sonar, the yeah, success density, unit, unit test coverage. And from the GitHub last week commits and the total number of commits. And so the number of contributors and the contributors list. So these are the performance results that I have directly pulled from the Jenkins server of all jobs so it would be easy for the integration team to actually see all the results at one place and the same with the boron release also and these are the tempest results Sorry. so this is related to the neutron bond uh, and the open stack so uh, I told you that I have written a robot listener library So I tested that listener library on a single robot file and this is the sample information that I have gathered. Uh, the job name and the status of it and the build number. The same goes with the performance results. The job name, the plot group, C bench performance and the max, min and average values. So that's it. So uh, the major part of the project that I have did is to actually pull this, pull the data, uh, gather the data and store it in a database. The remaining part is to actually visualize this, create a formula out of this. For example, a project that has code coverage less than 50% might be labeled as red or something kind of. So that's part, that part is remaining. So it's great to be here in Seattle. These are the photos that I've clicked a few days back. Thank you. So 
I would like to thank the Linux Foundation and my mentor and KSA, everyone here. Thank you. That's it. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sushan. Um, last two days have been overwhelming with Open Daylight Summit, and it's been a great experience. Uh, gladly enjoying the summit. Uh, let's move on to uh, the intern project I did during this summer. Uh, it was the IoT integration uh, with Open Daylight uh, and simulator development. So basically, I wrote a simulator to create uh, IoT devices messages. Uh, so what I did being an intern here is, uh, so there were some key things that I thought before taking this internship. Uh, one of the points with open source isn't just a give, it's a win-win. Um, so I thought let's start working on open source project. And thankfully Colin Dixon uh, came to our university who uh, gave us information about Open Delight. And that's where I thought I should be involved in the project. Uh, next thing is software defined network will disrupt is a thing that people say and it's it's quite true. Uh, and the third point was IoT is a thing where this IoT needs to get integrated with the skill it is being uh, like it is being developed. Uh, so basically, what I did is I created a VM to simulate uh, IoT devices that will actually work with Unified Secure Channel. I'll tell you a little about uh, Unified Secure Channel and how it is integrated with Open Delight. And uh, so I wrote that simulator in Java. Basically, uh, this is the USC architecture we can see here. Um, so, USC in, in USC we have a USC agent, and these are all enterprise edge nodes. They are called. These are actual IoT devices, and it it communicates with the USC agent, and then USC agent communicates through USC plugin to USC manager. The Open Daylight controller already has. So my goal was. To, to simulate these devices and make this end end to end connection so uh, just in a block diagram overview I would say these are uh, the IOT nodes uh, there can be multiple of them so with the simulator we you can simulate one or more number of devices uh, this is these all devices are connected with the IOT local server uh, I implemented uh, with MQTT and AMQP messages so the goal was to create uh, messages which follow multiple protocols. And then it communicates. So IoT simulator is the one who is taking care of uh, communicating these messages with the local server. Uh, at the top of it, the virtual machine has USC agent. And I clip them everything together in an IoT uh, test frame. I developed this using Vagrant. Uh, Mr. Anho was my mentor, and he developed all the insights. So this project was actual uh, his idea of of testing the secure channel. Uh, so this this VM is connected with the secure channel, and on the controller side, uh, it is connected with the USC manager. You can see, and it directly connects with that. I'll just give you a quick demo. So uh, I built up a Vagrant machine here. So um, Vagrant machine itself. Thanks, Casey. So uh, there. So with this vagrant up command, uh, it sets up a simulator that runs all the server services at the back end. And then I actually go into this uh, machine. <coughs> and 
And here you can see IoT simulator. That's the simulator I wrote. So uh, as you can see in the console here, it sends a hello there message to the server and it just receives a hello there uh, message in reply. So this one particularly is working with MQTT protocol as mentioned here. And you can also do it with AMQP as well. So that's another ping uh, message that, that sends to the controller and receives it back. Uh, that's about it. Um, the future scope of, of the same work is to integrate these uh, simulator with the robot uh, framework Open Daylight already has uh, and adding multiple protocols to do the same. And finally, connecting this to other IT projects like 1M2M. Uh, my key takeaways were ba background knowledge were very essential. Uh, uh, I think open source is better than school courses <laughs> sometimes. And and we, you have to ask for help for all the Open Daylight community. Thank you. Uh, lastly, I just would like to thank uh, the Linux Foundation, Open Daylight community, KC, and Anne Hote. Thank you so much. Hi guys. Uh, <coughs> uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the entire Linux Foundation and uh, the Open Daylight community uh, and Casey especially. Uh, so I just wanted to, you know, give a brief, uh, you know, uh, explanation on how I actually got the internship. So uh, I was already working on uh, you know the Open Daylight platform uh, as an you know as an independent project, and uh, while I was working on it, I actually stumbled upon you know the whole 2016 summer intern program, and uh, I was uh, doing a project for my you know for my capstone project, and uh, I thought that what I was doing I could extend those applications to the Open Daylight community and the platform. So uh, just a basic overview of what my project is. Uh, it's basically security aspects. So uh, Snort is, uh, the, the project is integration of Snort with the Open Daylight platform. And Snort is, uh, it's a tool uh, for intrusion detection. So it's actually a very uh, popular intrusion detection system. And uh, <coughs> It's it's a it's, it's a globally accepted security measure as of now for sp especially the traditional and legacy networks, and uh, when it comes to uh, you know software defined networks or any any platform like even Open Daylight, so there there was a the there was an event uh, NFV and Carrier SDN uh, at Denver, and uh, the VP of uh, you know the VP of Global Technology uh, Messaging Communications. Uh, Ray Watson, he actually stated that we are all screwed. Now, uh, the reason he says that is we are coming up with new solutions almost, you know, every day. So uh, we get problems from uh, uh, the companies and the vendors, and we come up with solutions, uh, you know, with Open Daylight platform. And the most solutions we create, you know, we are creating that many problems. So it. <coughs> Sorry about that. So as we are growing, you know, our, our uh, platform is becoming more vulnerable. So uh, that was one of the main motivations for my project was to, you know, start something that could remotely, you know, try to solve the security problem of uh, open daylight. And uh, since we are virtualizing all the network functions, we uh, it's difficult to have a perimeter sort of uh, you know security measure 
so that is one of the biggest challenges of you know the whole software defined network paradigm and uh, as we uh, as we move ahead uh, you know as we saw in uh, in the summit this time you know many companies are adopting adapting to the the, the new uh, controller i mean the whole open daylight controller so they have uh, they have their own product that is actually based on the open daylight framework and so uh, there is a very high demand of uh, open source technology like open daylight and with that demand people want to make sure that it is a secure solution and not just a solution uh so and about snort so snort is uh, was actually uh it's it it's a very lightweight uh solution it's a very lightweight intrusion detection system and it works in three different modes that is a packet sniffer mode where it just it uh, you know it'll scan all the incoming packets and it's it's going to identify the malicious activities and uh, it's going to tell the administrator about it then you have the packet logger mode where it just logs every packet and which is then the whole report is sent to the uh, admin to uh, correlate all the problems and then the main is network intrusion detection system where uh, sorry <laughs> where uh, we we actually we actually write a set of rules to identify uh, the the malicious activity so if you have uh, for example a dos attack so we got to set a rule that you know if these this many packets come you know in this time then it could be a potential dos attack so that's how uh, do, you know that's how snort you uh, snort is used so it's a very rule based signature detecting intrusion uh, system and uh, i haven't yet uh, you know sort of integrated both the you know both the components that is snort and the open daylight platform but i i did have a proposed uh, you know reference architecture where uh, uh, what i proposed was I'm going to mirror all the packets that are coming, you know, to the controller to a remote location where uh, where you'll have the uh, the intrusion detection system working. And uh, once Snort detects uh, some anomalies or uh, or malicious activities based on the rules that we have provided, uh, it is it is then supposed to send out that information to the controller so that the necessary mitigation. Uh, you know steps can be taken and uh, so now to uh, you know i have just thought of snort but in future i think uh, we can work to you know to make a common sort of framework so that we can use any third party tools for you know uh, as ids or ips so you know if as of now i'm working on creating a common framework where i can use either snort or splunk or any other you know third party tools so uh, it will m it might not solve the whole problem but you know we can at least start somewhere and you know we can start developing it so yep thank you I just want to say one thing really quick on the record. Uh, he is the only one that did not use one of the mentor provided uh, projects. He actually submitted his own project, which was approved by unanimously by the uh, entire committee that we held to decide what intern projects and what interns got hired. It was unanimously approved that we picked this project because it was so well written. Uh, and the fact that he actually took the initiative to come up with his own idea. So maybe just a thought for next year, putting that out there. Hello, everyone. My name is Ashish. Uh, sorry for the delay. And uh, so I'm a final year master's student from IIIT Hyderabad. And I come to know about Open Daylight from one of my senior who did an internship last year. and. Uh, yeah, so my project was titled as JSON Generator for Robot Testing, and my mentors were Lori and Veena. Thanks, Lori, for helping me throughout the project. And yeah, 
so uh, the motivation behind my project is uh, as we all know that open daylight uses robot test framework for testing so there are various open daylight services that are running and for testing them we use robot framework and these robot uh, framework uses yang models uh, which are uh, like uh, we use manually written static json files that are stored in git repository uh, for test so let's say uh, i have a rest uh, api so what we do in test we need to test whether it is working fine or not so we pass some parameter and get some res response that response is in the form of json so uh, currently what we are doing before this project is uh, those expected json files are present in a folder so we write them manually suppose if i want to check the same rest api with different parameter then what i will do i'll just uh, create another file with a small parameter change so this is very tedious task nobody would like to do that so my project uh, what it did it uh, automate this process of creating json file on the fly suppose uh, if i would like to uh, 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 let's say uh, okay sorry so uh, as in the most test data that is used in odl robot test is yang model so the second thing that i considered is like uh, suppose i change the yang model itself so uh, it is uh, very difficult to uh, debug if uh, what change i have made in the yang model okay so uh, what i considered is like uh, to debug it uh, to make the debugging easy uh, we should uh, use the yang model itself to generate the json file so that's the motivation behind this project so uh, our objective was very clear uh, we need to automate the process of building json files for testing by providing some builder like code that can be called to generate the desired json with the default or variable data so we need a framework that have some pi uh, that that had some uh, helper apis that can be called uh, in the robot test so that they can use them uh, in an efficient and readable manner so uh, and the yeah the final uh, deliverable was the uh, migrated test so before uh, the project we use the json files so we migrated those uh, tests to use our new framework of generating json on the fly so what was our, my app, what was our approach so our approach was first like parse the yang model itself and capture the syntax and uh, then generate a python representation or any high level representation of these models so that we can fill those representation with some values to create json itself and then use these uh, python representation to create some uh, python helper function so that they can be used by the robot test file itself and finally yeah migrate the previously written robot test to use new framework so that was uh, our approach so how we uh, implemented it so there is a tool uh, open source project uh, pyang bind so pyang bind is a plugin for pyang that generates a python class hierarchy from a yang data model and the resulting resulting classes can be directly interacted within python so it's an open source project and rob shakir is like the main developer there and he's doing a great job in this project like uh, also it made a task of uh, uh, parsing the yang uh, model and then uh, generate the high level representation those two points uh, are uh, well uh, mm, represented by the pyang bind so because it helped us in creating python class from the given yang models so during the course of my internship i found few issues in pyang bind so it was in a very naive phase so like pyang bind does not supported bits type in yang model still it is not supporting bit bits type so we handle these type separately in our builder code uh, uh, what we did like we use some kind of uh, 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 our own logic for the bits we did it differently so inheritance of identity values also was not implemented in the pyang bind so during my internship period i opened an issue there and also helped the uh, community in providing tests and they also merged some of it also some fee debugging statements were present in the pyang bind 
while generating JSON like underscore underscore yang underscore order and these debugging statements were not very useful for us. Also, it was not like we are uh, uh, here dealing with J JSON. So a new field, uh, if it is not matching with the expected JSON, then obviously our test won't pass. So that these kind of uh, statements, uh, I opened an issue for that also, and the, these are also resolved in the current version. So how we implemented it? So most of my work was based only, uh, uh, was integrated in list flow mapping slash MSMR robot test uh, on the, and integration slash test project and relang slash builder project. So how I did it? First, we uh, integrated PyangBind in the environment itself so that test can pass uh, uh, using PyangBind. So I created a bash script which downloads the yang file corresponding for the Jenkins test branch and generates PyangBind Python classes in the directory. So yeah, bash script, uh, what it does, it uses the uh, Pyang, it, it uses PyangBind to generate binding files and those binding files are Python high level representation so that we can use that those binding in the test file itself. So uh, this script will, will create a folder inside the workspace directory which will have some Python classes that can be used by our builder code. So yeah, so uh, after uh, once we have those binding files present in a folder, we can use them in uh, in our JSON generator library. So I created a library JSON generator. It have uh, it has like uh, many Python helper functions that uh, that uh, that that can return the expected JSON for the tests. So what we'll do we'll, uh, we can now call these Python helper function and give them give them some sensible defaults to get some JSON back. So also then we. Uh, then I then we created some robot keywords using Python library to make the Lisp test more readable and high level. Yeah, so uh, like uh, there were some cases where we need to do the same thing in different tests again and again. So we uh, we kind of make it much more modular uh, and make the some keywords so that uh, the tests are much more uh, are more readable and high level. So. And finally, we migrated the test to use our new framework. So it's like the final output that uh, that was for our, uh, that was the final deliverable of my my internship project. So previously, the tests were like they were using the files itself. So uh, you can see in the left side, uh, in the right, in the red, uh, they are directly using the manually written JSON files. But here on the right side, they are using the keywords itself. So it is much more readable, and also it uh, it uh, uh, it is not consuming any space because there we we had like around 40 to 50 JSON files already present in a Beryllium folder. So that's not a uh, not not a good thing. So here here we are directly generating the JSON on the fly. So as you can see in the first example, uh, uh, on the left side, I couldn't say what are, what are the arguments, what is EID. So uh, it is not that readable. Here uh, I can exactly see and say that uh, this uh, this is uh, this is using the IPv4 EID. So this is kind of a demo. I can also sh show a little demo of how to generate the binding files using PyangBind. So our bash script, uh, it takes two parameter. One is branch. And other is workspace. So, 
now if i run my generate underscore binding bash script so it will uh, create the binding files sorry it should be capital yeah so here uh, we are downloading all the corresponding yang files for the list flow mapping msmr robot tests yeah so it says like yang dependencies and bindings downloaded successfully that means that uh, pyang bind had uh, generated all the yang bindings for the corresponding robot tests so i so as you can see there is a folder and that is odl list flow mapping yang files so it holds all those uh, pyang bind generated yang bindings so yeah uh, there is a folder list flow mapping yang bindings now so this is json generator library that had all the uh, python helper functions that we can use in any uh, robot test so so like at the end i am uh, i'll show you that i am now using the get list address json keyword it will take some parameter and uh, return the json so this is just for the demo in the main code base this these debugging statements were not present so yeah so this uh, json generator library used all those generated uh, yang bindings and now uh, creating this json on the fly so this is how we can uh, like migrate our test instead of using all the uh, manually written json files we can use these helper functions to directly generate json on the fly and then check if they pa it passes or not yeah thank you that's all from my side thank you very much good afternoon everyone uh, i'm sushan um last two days have been overwhelming with open delight summit and it's been a great experience uh, gladly enjoying the summit uh, let's move on to uh, the intern project i did during this summer uh, it was the IoT integration uh, with open daylight uh, and simulator development. So basically, I wrote a simulator to create uh, IoT devices messages. Uh, so what I did being an intern here is, uh, so there were some key things that I thought before taking this internship. Uh, one of the points was open source isn't just a give, it's a win-win. Um, so I thought let's start working on open source project and thankfully Colin Dixon uh, came to our university who uh, gave us information about Open Delight and that's where I thought I should be involved in the project. Uh, next thing is software defined network will disrupt is a thing that people say and it's, it's quite true. Uh, and the third point was IoT is a thing. Hello. Yeah. Hello everyone, thanks for having me here. Uh, so my uh, open delete project title is 
release dashboard for open daylight project and it's Coming to myself, I'm SVK Rohit. I'm an undergraduate fourth year. I'm from IIT Hyderabad, India. And my interests are in cloud computing and web development. And my mentor was George. So the project. So what's the goal of the project? Simply put, a dashboard that gives a birth's view of all open daylight projects, uh, project stresses. So there are many pr projects in open daylight. And so this dashboard intends to pinpoint those projects which have, like, which are lagging behind in and specify what specific areas they are lagging behind. For example, uh, a project might not have commit since past few months or a project might have many pending critical bugs to be solved. So this dashboard intends to point out those. Now how do, how do I point out those as in how do I calculate those? That is through benchmark analysis of each project. Now what is benchmark analysis is? It intends to give a score to each project based on some benchmark. So it's a listener library. So as soon as a robot test ends, it automatically calls this function and then the function stores the results into the database. So the other part that I have integrated into my dashboard is the OpenStack and Open Daylight Tempest results that were given by Pramod Ajay, the guy from Intel. So by this one can understand that this dashboard uh, makes it easy to navigate through all types of results that Open Daylight Pro I was in provides or gives. So the demo. Yeah, so here you can see uh, these are the bugs, uh, the blocker, the confirm bugs, the critical bugs, the number, the count uh, that have pulled from the Bugzilla API. And these are this is from the sonar, the yeah success density, unit, unit test coverage, and from the GitHub last week commits and the total number of commits. And so the number of contributors and the contributors list. So these are the performance results that I have directly pulled from the Jenkins server of all jobs. So it would be easy for the integration team to actually see all the results at one place. And the same with the boron release also. And these are the Tempest results or some criteria. So to evaluate a project, uh, I need data. And to set the criteria also, I need data. And I need data from two sources. That is from the, pro uh, the tools that Open Daylight Project uses, such as Sonar, Bugzilla, Git, and the results of various performance tests and robot results. So I need a framework where I could mine this data and then store it in a database and then query the database and then analyze it so that I can calculate the score or do a benchmark analysis. So I have used, coming to technical details, I have used Django and D3 for visualization. The Postgres have used, uh, the database have used is Postgres. And the tools that I have mined from are Git, Bugzilla and Sonar. So uh, I have written Python scripts that actually use the APIs provided by GitHub, uh, Sonar or Bugzilla. Uh, they, pull, they, call, they pull it like every five minutes and then it, they update, it in, update the data in the database. What is the data? I will show it in the demo. Uh, so for the Jenkins performance results, I had to write a Jenkins post build script which automatically uh, stores the results into the database as soon as the build finishes. Uh, a robot listener library for storing ro robot results. So this is related to the neutron bond uh, and the open stack. So uh, I told you that I have written a robot listener library. So I tested that listener library on a single robot file and this is the sample information that I have gathered. Uh, the job name and the status of it and the build number. The same goes with the performance results. The job name, the plot group, C bench performance and the max, min and average values. So that's it. So uh, the major part of the project that I have did is to actually pull this, pull the data, uh, gather the data and store it in a database. The remaining part is to actually visualize this, create a formula out of this. For example, a project that has code coverage less than 50% might be labeled as red or something kind of. So that's part, that part is remaining. So it's great to be here in Seattle. These are the photos that I've clicked a few days back. Thank you. So I would like to thank the Linux Foundation and my mentor and KSA, everyone here. Thank you. That's it.